let c equal the function of x and y, which is equal to the square root of the quantity 4 minus x squared, divided by the square root of the quantity y squared minus 9. In part a, we want to find and sketch the domain of f of x and y, and then we want to use the total differential to approximate the change in z if x changes from 0 to 0.1 and y changes from 5 to 5.2. What we want to do first is find and sketch the domain of f of x, y. So from the function, we know that the quantity 4 minus x squared is greater than or equal to 0 because we can't have a square root of a negative number. So the inner part of the square root must be greater than or equal to 0. So that means 4 is greater than or equal to x squared, and so x is greater than or equal to negative 2 and less than or equal to 2. Similarly, but slightly different, we know that the quantity y squared minus 9 is greater than 0. It's not greater than or equal to 0, because in this case, the square root of y squared minus 9 can't equal 0 either, because that would make the fraction, that is the function, undefined. The numerator can equal 0, because that makes the whole fraction 0, but the denominator can't equal 0, because that would produce undefined answer, and not simply 0 which is something we can work with. We can't work with undefined, though. As such, y squared minus 9 is only greater than 0. So y squared is greater than 9. So anything below negative 3 and anything above 3 will satisfy the inequality. Then we'll draw a sketch of the region. So x is between negative 2 and 2. I'll just draw a dashed line to indicate the region to which it is constrained. So we know that x values can only be within this region. And we know y is any value less than negative 3. and greater than 3. Taking into account the constraints given by the x values, we can see that the region shaded by both colors is the domain of the function, but we also have to be careful because here we have greater than and less than or equal to, whereas here we only have greater than or less than. So for the y's, we keep the dashed lines, but for the x's, we need solid lines to indicate that the, uh, the boundaries of the region in terms of x are included, whereas the boundary of y, which is negative 3 or 3, those are not solutions for y. Part b, use the total differential to approximate the change in z if x changes from 0 to 0 0.1 and y changes from 5 to 5.2. So the total differential is indicated by dz, which is equal to the partial derivative with respect to x of the function times dx plus the partial derivative of the function with respect to y times dy. We can also write this with the partial derivative notation, so the partial derivative of, of z with respect to x times dx, plus the partial derivative of z with respect to y times dy. So first we'll find the partial derivative with respect to x. So we'll rewrite the function as 4 minus x squared to the 1 half divided by y squared minus 9 to the 1 half. So
So deriving with respect to x and treating y as a constant, we can pull out the 1 over y squared minus 9 to the 1 half as a constant and derive 4 minus x squared to the 1 half. So we get 1 half times 4 minus x squared to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside, which is negative 2x. This simplifies down to the square root of y squared minus 9 times the square root of 4 minus x squared in the denominator oh, times 2. In the numerator, we have minus 2x. Partial derivative with respect to y. Now we treat y as the variable, and x is simply a constant. So x is our constant, so we have 4 minus x squared to the 1 half treated separately as a constant. Then we take the derivative of y squared minus 9 to the negative 1 half. So that's negative 1 half times y squared minus 9 to the negative 3 halves times the derivative of y squared minus 9, which is 2y. So what we end up with is the square root of 4 minus x squared times 2y divide by 2, negative 2, times y squared minus 9 to the 3 halves power. So at this point, we have fx and fy, and now we'll solve for fx and fy utilizing 0 as x and 5 as y. That gives us fx of 0, and fy, if we cancel the 2s, we have 4 minus 0, so that's the square root of 4, which is 2, times y, which is 5, divided by negative 25 minus 9 is 16 to the 3 halves power, giving us a negative 10 over 64. We have fx of xy and fy of xy. Now we need dx and dy. dx and dy, that's change in x and change in y. Our change in x is the difference in point 1 and 0, which is just point 1. And the change in y is the difference of 5.2 and 5. So dy equals 0 0.2. dz, then, is just multiplication and addition. So we have 0 times 0 0.1 plus negative 10 over 64 times 0 0.2. So dz is equal to negative 2 over 64, giving us a final result of negative 1 over 32 as the total differential, the approximation of the change in z.